Hey guys, uh, DM Scotty here. Good to have you with me. Uh, this is kind of an off-subject video, um, but I thought it might be of, of interest to some people. Um, I don't know if anyone else has had a problem with this, but um, you know that um, the subject of female monsters, I guess, um, they really don't model a lot of female monsters as far as miniatures. You can fair, find the occasional, you know, rare monster that's models a female, but you know the the really iconic monsters, you really can't find as females like you know uh, trolls or ogres or that kind of thing. And uh, I was kind of disappointed with this. Um, and you know, it, in role playing games, we try to have the equality of the sexes. Um, not every game, but you know, um, I think it's. It, you can bring that to your game. Um, a lot of female gamers have talked about this, and I agree. Uh, it's your world, and you create, can create it how you want. Um, and if you want female monsters, uh, you know, who are essentially just as badass as the, you know, regular monsters, more power to you. Um, I want to talk about um, modeling these monsters. Because uh, you really can't find these kind of monsters. So what I was going to do is I was going to go to the table and show you a few monsters that I have modeled into females um, from their male counterpart monsters. Now, um, these monsters um, have breasts uh, like females would. Um, they um, Now in my monsters, they don't have covering of their breasts. They're not wearing bras. They're not wearing chain mail. They're not wearing you know, anything to cover it up. In primitive, you know, in primitive societies, um, women are not, uh, you know, ashamed of their breasts. And um, it's only the kind of the Western objectification of the breast that we are afraid we, we're, we're afraid we're going to explode and burst into flame if we show a breast to somebody. Um, but I really wanted to have that philosophy in my monsters. I mean, um, I know a lot of the new monster lines, like especially Paizo, um, they've created their female monsters and they're all wearing some kind of modest thing over their breasts. Now, you know, most monsters aren't going to even bother wearing anything over their breasts. Um, because, why? You know? Um, now with the genitalia, I can see how that they would wear stuff, but, you know, I think in most, in most monster societies, they wouldn't care if their breasts are showing. So, um, if, if you're offended by, you know, even you know, fake breasts or whatever. Um, don't watch the rest of this video because I'm going to show a couple of examples of monsters that I have turned into female monsters uh, through through modeling, um, and I'll explain what I did. So yeah, shut this off now if you're offended by that. Uh, if you're in kind of intrigued and want to see what I did with it, uh, continue on with the video, and I'll go to the table now and show you what I did. Here's my first monster, and you can see it's a troll mother and her son. And my players met her very early in the campaign. They were exploring an area to try to pacify it, to make it into a kingdom. Uh, this is from the Kingmaker AP. Um, this is not an official encounter that was in the AP. I added quite a bit to that AP. It's pretty lean as far as I'm concerned, but I added quite a bit to it. And one of the encounters they had was with this troll mother and the troll threw a rock out from the bush and it hit one of the players' horses and killed it. And the players were on guard and it was kind of a, a tense standoff moment between the troll mother and the party. And of course, the troll was pretty nasty. I mean, she probably could have torn them up pretty easily. Um, so wisely, they decided to back down. But she really wasn't after them. She just wanted some food for her young. And her you can see her son here. And he... Um, wasn't um, he wasn't quite this big at the time he was he was more like an infant uh, and she wanted uh, food for her son and she just wanted the horse and she didn't want to bother them anymore she just wanted to have the food and so they um, they came to an agreement and they gave her the horse and they you know backed off and everything um, so but interesting enough later on they uh, she they got a note from her. She wrapped a note in an ogre hide and threw it into the into their town. And uh, her son had been kidnapped, and she helped them. Um, she said she would help them if they freed her son. So he was in the prison. Uh, Hagrolka had held her had held him in the prison. So they ended up helping her. And uh, so you can see, I uh, this is basically a D and D 
um, troll and this is from the uh, Bones line in the uh, Reaper miniatures, her son. But her, she's from the D&D line. You can see I modeled the breasts on her, um, appropriately troll looking. Uh, I also put some moss on her because she's like a forest troll. So, and a little log on the base to make it uh, make it look like that. But uh, so that's how I did the I did the modeling on that. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show or I'll talk about the technique I used to actually model that on the model because um, I haven't shown that before. But uh, so there you go. There's a, a an interesting uh, recurring female troll that I've had in my campaign. And uh, now I'll move on to the to the next monster. So I've been using the Games Workshop Ogres for my ogre board, and um, they, of course there's no female ogres, so I wanted to add some female ogres. So here's a couple that I modeled. I'll give you a little bit of a closer look at her. So, pretty scary. The second one. Uh, so it gave a little bit of uh, uh, sex to the force. Um, some females, actually, in the force, not just males. Um, we, uh, there was a little funny encounter we had while we were playing uh, playing one of our games. Um, we have a, a mage that's kind of a scaredy mage, and um, she ended up chasing him around the map, um, calling him a little man, was going to eat him, and calling him all kinds of taunts, and he's running around, he's trying to run away from her. So it was kind of a funny uh, encounter, but uh, there we go. There's some female ogres, and uh, now I'm going to show you the material I used to, to sculpt those extra bits on the ogres. So here's the material I use to, to sculpt the uh, extra bits. Um, it's a two-part epoxy. So you mix the two parts in equal measure. And uh, then you can, you can sculpt it on the model. Um, there's, they have a lot of other different kinds um, that are very similar to this. Uh, green stuff is a similar type of material that you may have seen. But it um, it's, doesn't, ha doesn't harden to as hard a texture, I think, as the epoxy itself does. So I like using the epoxy. Now the epoxy can be a bit tricky because it, it tends to be sticky. Um, so it can stick to your tools uh, and that kind of thing. But a way to get around, an easy way to get around that is to use uh, plenty of water on your tools. I have seen people actually lick their tools, which that's kind of gross. I wouldn't do that. But uh, I, I keep water nearby and wet my tools. Also, do not let this stuff harden on your tools as it will not come off. This stuff is rock hard. It is fantastic. So if you sculpt it, if you do sculpt it on a miniature, it is not going to come off. It is, it's, it's great stuff. So uh, here's what, th that's what I use to do the breasts on the, uh, on the monsters. And uh, if you feel up to it, give it a try. And uh, turn some of the uh, male-dominated monster world into the female-dominated monster world. Hey, a few last words. Uh, one thing, I didn't want to go into too much detail on the epoxy sculpt because there's a lot of um, tutorials online um, how to do the uh, epoxy sculpting uh, as well as the green stuff and that kind of thing. It's a very similar type of sculpting. So if you've done green stuff before, same type of thing. Um, and it does have a limited working time so when you make it you have to, put, you have to get it on the miniature and then get it set up and, um, and it's pretty sticky so it can be tricky to use. So. Just keep that in mind, and I, I would definitely look at uh, tutorials or information online to give you more an idea what to expect and how to work with it. And then a last note on the, uh, the female uh, monsters. Um, you know, th th this may not be for every group, you know, depending on how open-minded your group is. Uh, you know, certain people may be offended if they see monster breasts or whatever. Uh, you know, I didn't show any genitalia, but they may be offended with breasts or whatever. So you always have to be sensitive to your group. Uh, if your group finds this kind of stuff offensive, uh, which is not, you know, it's just, you know, how, na you know, the natural world would be. Well, you know, it's monsters, but, you know, anyways, you know, um, there are certain people, though, that find, might find that kind of stuff offensive. So, you know, always... Be sensitive to your players. Um, you know, if you don't, if you don't know your players, so um, there you go. I just uh, my two cents on uh, using female monsters and adding them to your game. So uh, I'll see you next time.